A Trident missile has dramatically misfired and crashed into the ocean just yards away from the Royal Navy submarine that fired it. HMS Vanguard was taking part in planned tests off the coast of America last month. We understand that the Trident 2 D5 missile, which was unarmed, was not carrying nuclear warheads, blasted out of the submarine as planned, but its first stage rocket boosters failed to ignite, and the 58-ton missile crashed back into the ocean just yards away from HMS Vanguard and sank. Now, at the time, Defence Secretary Grant Shapps and the First Sea Lord Admiral Sir Ben Key were both on board HMS Vanguard to witness the landmark launch. Now, the MOD has confirmed that, in its words, an anomaly occurred, but it wouldn't go into details for national security reasons, but it insisted that this was a contained event and the safety and reliability of the wider UK nuclear deterrent is not affected. Now, this is the second failed test in a row of Trident missiles launched from Royal Navy submarines, and that is clearly going to be something of concern. The last one was in 2016. In that instance, a Trident II was launched from HMS Vengeance, which had come out of a period of refit. Uh, in that occasion, the missile did launch. It came out of the submarine, the boosters ignited, but it veered off course, reportedly towards continental America and it's self-destructed. These missiles, uh, their makers Lockheed Martin, US makers Lockheed Martin, insist they are one of the most proven and reliable uh, large ballistic missiles in the world. They've been tested uh, 191 times since they were designed in 1989. They entered service with the American Navy in 1990 and with the Royal Navy in 1994. These uh, test fires are known as demonstration and shakedown operations. But the last two that the Royal Navy has done have not gone to plan. Indeed, the Navy has only done 12 of these demonstration and shakedown operations since the Trident missile came into service 30 years ago. It's a much larger number for the US Navy, and that's partly down to cost. These missiles cost upwards of £17 million each. It's, it, it's quite, an, quite an event uh, for them to be tested. They were tested more frequently when they first entered service, less frequently. Now, they're designed to blast into the edge of space. These weapons are the United Kingdom's weapon of last resort. Uh, they're designed to shoot up to the edge of space and they can navigate by the stars and travel reportedly up to 7,500 miles before re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and blasting their devastating payload of nuclear warheads at multiple targets, each missile able to hit multiple targets. The MOD has remained tight-lipped around uh, the cause of this incident. Everything to do with Britain's nuclear weapons is shrouded in secrecy. That's essentially because the way the nuclear deterrent works, the way the United Kingdom's nuclear deterrent works, is that there is always a submarine, a nuclear-armed submarine at sea, hidden beneath the waves or perhaps beneath the ice cap, ready to strike back in the event of a nuclear attack, a nuclear first strike against the UK or its allies. And for that deterrent to work, the nuclear armed submarine has to be hidden, has to survive the first strike in order to hit back, in order to have that second strike capability, which is why the location of the submarines is a very closely guarded secret. Anything to do with submarine operations is a closely guarded secret. Nonetheless, we knew that this launch was due to take place because uh, US officials have had to issue a warning to other vessels and aircraft that might be in the area of potential hazardous activity and potential debris from the missiles. And that revealed both the launch site and the various stages that the missile might be shedding uh, parts of its, its boosters, its rocket boosters, and the impact site. It was designed, or rather it was programmed, to travel about 3,700 miles in a sort of southeasterly direction uh, the launch site was about 90 kilometers off the coast of uh, Cape Canaveral and Port Canaveral on the eastern coast of Florida. The missile was designed to travel southeast towards the Central Island, but not quite that far. And it should have impacted in the mid-Atlantic, so roughly midway between Brazil and West Africa. Now, that was 
that planned route was significantly shorter, about a thousand miles shorter than the planned route in 2016 when it went wrong the last time. And it was also only about half the range of the reported 7,500 mile range of these missiles. Now, from a national security point of view, from a UK national security point of view, the Ministry of Defence is absolutely adamant that they remain confident in the capability of both the Trident missiles and the nuclear submarines and collectively as the nuclear deterrent. Uh, we are expecting the government to say more about this uh, now that the news has broken exclusively in the sun.